Let's now start this bulletin by giving you a snippet from the exclusive conversation that Vion had with Joshua Wong, who has now become the face of the anti-China uprising underway in Hong Kong. Talking about the new security bill, Wong said that if turned into a law, it would be terrible for the people of Hong Kong. He said that time was running out for the people of Hong Kong. Otherwise, the bill could be used to silence their voices. Time is running out in Hong Kong, especially how the one country, two system pr promised by Beijing already turned to be one country, one system once after the announcement of China's government. With the anti-subversion regulation in the national security law, it will be really terrible and easily to silence the voice of not only protesters, but even businessmen, expat, NGOs, religious groups, and how they tightening the freedom of people live in China and Tibet might be the future destiny of Hong Kong. That's why we urge Beijing to withdraw the national security law, just ensure the safety of communist regime, but never guarantee the future of Hong Kong. Last year, the protests were fueled by anger against the extradition bill. And this time, it is a national security bill. Wong said that while the extradition bill had to go through the Hong Kong's Legislative Council, this time was an attempt to bypass the Legislative Council itself. Wong said that the separation of power between China and Hong Kong existed now in name only. Last year, when Beijing suggested to introduce the extradition bill, at least need to go through the legislation process in the Hong Kong Legislative Council. But in 2020, they announced that to impose the national security law without any discussion, without any meeting or vote by the lawmaker in Hong Kong. They bypassed whole of the legislature system in Hong Kong. Separation of power exists in name only. It has been said that China is trying to pass the legislation in a hushed manner to avoid any questions from international community, which is busy right now handling a pandemic. Wong further added that it was China which exported the virus to the world and was now taking an unfair advantage. When China export COVID-19 from Wuhan to the world, Beijing take advantage on it, introduce this evil law and assume that the world will not pay attention to it. But we must put Hong Kong under the global spotlight and urge fellow stakeholders of the global community to stand with Hong Kong. Videos of Hong Kong's riot police using tear gas, rubber bullets and beating up the protesters were last year's highlights. Wong said that a political crisis needs to be sorted out through a political system. And by resorting to such brutality, China was trying to convert Hong Kong into Xinjiang and Tibet. Uh, all of the violence is come from the root cause of the police brutality. Water cannons, rubber bullets, or uh, the those uh, tear gas were used by a riot police. Political crisis must solved by political system reform. Instead of blaming the victim, I will ask how come Beijing would impose such national security law and just jail activists for more than 10 or 20 years and turn Hong Kong to be the next Xinjiang or Tibet? The international community has now taken notice of what's happening in Hong Kong. 23 nations have expressed their concerns over the new bill in a joint statement. Wong said that they will continue to seek international allies and support, and that supporting Hong Kong was a question of right and wrong. Uh, supporting Hong Kong is not a matter of right or left, it's the matter of right or wrong. So we hope to seek for international allies, not only in the Western world, but even in the global community in Asia. So uh, in such a uphill battle, we hope to continue and fight back and let Beijing know that kowtow to the authoritarian regime should not be the only way out.